What is up guys, Big Gamer Al here. How are you guys doing today? I'm super, thanks for asking. So guys, a little bit about today's gameplay. Um, today I'm going to be showing you a little bit of Star Fox Zero. Um, I'm going to be showing you some of the first level, and I know you guys have seen a lot of that already, so if you stick around there'll be some um, some of the uh, space stuff and see some space stations and a boss fight and what have you on there as well. So um, my thoughts on the game, it's a good game, uh, but we're not here to talk about Star Fox today, we're here to talk about Nintendo NX. Now, this is a subject that is getting a lot of legs at the moment on the internet, and rightly so. Um, I think if you look, especially on YouTube, at some of the most searched subjects, I mean, Nintendo NX is going to come. It's going to come across that. And um, and as a Nintendo fan, this machine has got me super excited. Um, recently, we've had confirmed. Um, leaks from people close to developers um, that seem to have been you know semi confirmed uh, facts from from people on like NeoGAF and uh, and uh, moderators and stuff like that and you know we're hearing stuff like oh the Nintendo NX is more powerful than the PlayStation 4 um, you know that Sony's running scared maybe that's why they're bringing out a PlayStation Neo um, that Nintendo NX is going to be a handheld hybrid it's gonna have more, you know, of those 3DS kind of titles over over onto the uh, onto the home console system. We're hearing, you know, all this fantastic stuff about you know online communities and and um, you know being able to connect to your smartphones and your other devices that you've got running at home. And uh, it's you know it's all really really exciting stuff. Um, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna talk about some of these some of the um, rumors. And we're going to discuss, you know, plausibility and what we think and and what what we might like from a Nintendo NX. So, the first thing that really crosses my mind is what are Nintendo doing. Um, all of this stuff is coming out. There's got to be some merit to some of it because they seem to be shutting these uh, down pretty pretty rapidly, and they're not coming in themselves, which makes me think that they're they're holding a little bit back for maybe an announcement of their own. And when are they going to announce this? Everyone says, oh, you know, it's going to be May. They're going to want to get out ahead of E3. They're going to want to get out and get the details out in a Nintendo Direct, you know, get ahead of everyone, you know, maybe get get some uh, exposure before, you know, Sony blows the lid off of them with with that um, PlayStation 4K and what have you. Now, I am <laughs> I reckon they should wait for E3. Some people are saying, you know, it's well poised for an E3 announcement. Nintendo's been quite E three in the in the most recent years. But that I think that kinda of gives them an edge. I don't think Microsoft and Sony are expecting Nintendo to come hard and strong at um at E three because they, they just haven't done that recently. They've been sticking to the Nintendo Directs quite diligently. Um but I think the the, the sheer hype that would have been caused <laughs> by them not speculating on any of these rumours up until E3. Imagine, I mean, the Nintendo NX uh, hype is at fever pitch already. People are, you know, digging up every last crumb of information based on this machine. And that just goes to show me that people do want another Nintendo console. People do want Nintendo to succeed. People are tired with, you know, the way things are in console gaming at the moment. It's a little bit stale. The most recent machines from... Sony and Microsoft aren't exactly setting the world on fire. Everyone buys a PS4 because it's cheap, but it's cheap because, let's face it, it's kind of a vanilla box. It doesn't do a great deal. What it does do, it does well. It runs the games pretty well as long as you don't mind a bit of 30 frames per second. Um, but, you know, developers can't really push things. Um, teams are big in developers at the moment, you know, 200 man teams and stuff, but. So there are some developers out there that would like to push things a little bit harder or would at least like to be able to muscle through some of the harder aspects of programming games for these consoles and be able to easily hit a 60 frames per second without having to you know, to optimise for months of months on end, really. Um, and I think that brings us to our next point, is everyone's talking, and I think mean, the main point that everyone's trying to get across is that Nintendo needs to develop uh, deliver quite a powerful box this time around in Nintendo NX um, and not go with a weird architecture like the Wii U or with an underpowered machine like the Wii and how powerful do I think Nintendo NX is going to be um, I do believe that 
for them to sell a lot of these units, it's going to have to be under four hundred dollars. Um, and I think the price of comp looking at the price of components at the moment, there's nothing stopping them delivering a console that, with a bit of optimization, can't deliver, say, a graphics a GPU performance of something like an R9 390, um, which, as we know, as long as you don't, you, as long as you're not after the highest frame rates, can deliver you um, a little bit of 4K gaming, especially on you know what everyone likes to play these days, which is your MOBAs and what have you. Um, and it can also deliver, um, you know, unbelievable 1080p gaming, um, where you're going to get, you know, in a lot of the more common titles, you're going to get 100 frames per second, you know, at your 1080p. And I think the fact that you can pick up a graphics card like that for a couple of hundred pounds, a couple of hundred US dollars, um, means that, you know, with the deal that, that AMD have with Nintendo, where Nintendo can basically walk away with cost price, um, you know, manufactured uh, GPUs from AMD um, at the moment I think it's not out of the realms of possibility of seeing something similar to an R9 390 style GPU appearing in the Nintendo NX and from all the reports we're hearing where it's saying oh it's more powerful than a, than a, um, a PS4 let's let's be honest let's be honest right now PS4 really is GPUs um, probably couldn't really outdo I mean obviously the console's got a heavy amount of optimization um, and it's really nice for developers to be able to develop for a you know uh, a known spec but let's be honest the PS4 GPU not that much more powerful than say a 680 or a 770 or something like that and I think Nintendo's gonna you know, it has got Sony worried let's be honest um, Sony's saying right this this box is purely to run our to, so we can get out um, a better VR performance from Sony, uh, PlayStation VR, and look, they're not lying. All right, the the PS4 as it is at the moment is not going to be able to deliver what developers want as far as VR goes. They're going to have to seriously, seriously hamstring the resolutions to get an acceptable frame rate, even with the computing box. All right, I don't, I'm not trying to upset Sony fans. I have a PlayStation 4, a PlayStation 3, PS2, a PS1. You know, I've I've been you know, buying Sony for a long time, just like you guys. Um, but Sony knows it needs it needs more power in that box. Okay, um, they've got to push their four K video, and they've got to make sure that that VR works well. They're not, but you know, they know it's going to damage their reputation a little bit with some of their customers. But their hand is being forced, and one of the, one of the reasons it's being forced is Nintendo. I really believe. Nintendo's next box is going to be a half generational leap. Everyone said it. They're not going to blow the, everyone out of the water with a five hundred ninety nine pound box that you know delivers sixty frames, four K gaming, you know, of Witcher three or Dark Souls three or something like that. They're going to come out with a with a half step. Um, it's going to be, um, you know, a machine comparable to a PS four, but its clock speeds and and uh, RAM speeds are going to be much higher. Um, it wouldn't surprise me to see, you know faster hard drives and stuff in there as well um, and it's gonna it's gonna be hard if if Sony and Microsoft don't do something to to justify these boxes um, and Nintendo will take a large amount of market share so it it makes sense to you know kind of cut them off there now let's talk a little bit about what the hardware might uh, what form the hardware might come in so Nintendo NX has been touted as maybe a console handheld hybrid Maybe it'll come out in two parts, the console this year or the handhold this year and the other part next year. Um, what do I think about that? I think it's very possible, um, having learned what they did with the Wii U, they might want to bundle a, a screen in with the machine. I mean, I think we could all see that as being a possibility. Um, and I think the fact that they've amalgamated their dev teams, 3DS and Wii U, makes me think that Looking at the market, how much longer can the market sustain a $60 price tag um, at $50 for handheld games and what have you? I think Nintendo knows already that it needs to have a tiered system um, to, be a, to be able to sell these games to the consumer at much more acceptable levels. Now, how are they going to do this is they will be having teams of different sizes and they're going to be dishing out these projects based on... Right, Small team, this is a mobile game, this is our $5, this is our $1, whatever, free, freemium, whatever you want to call it. Right, 
next team this is going to be $30 this this game is going to be $30 it's going to be smaller in scale maybe it's going to be more limited in what it can deliver so maybe it's a top down game you know a strategy game maybe this is a um a role playing game with a smaller scope um maybe it's an arcade style title like a star fox zero and these games will be sold at a lower than $60 price tag um that consumers will get used to these this three tier system of games um and then you will have your top tier games and you know i think it wouldn't surprise me if they can push the envelope a little bit that these games are slightly more expensive than sixty dollars. And I know you're going to shoot me there, but I think what we need to be able to sustain two hundred and fifty and three hundred man development teams is if you're going to make a hundred hour game and it's going to run and look as beautiful as games do these days, and you don't want to pay for a hundred dollars worth of um, DLC uh, season passes and a thousand dollars worth of freemium on the side content. Then you're going to need to start ponying up six, you know, seventy, eighty dollars, um, you know, fifty, fifty-five English pounds worth of, of 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 money over to these guys so they can actually build these better games. Now, I th- I expect them to um, launch with sixty-dollar games, and I think if Sony and Microsoft um, launch pa- more powerful machines, or if they if they don't and they struggle to keep up with Nintendo, I expect Nintendo to start pushing the envelope here. Maybe having a um, sixty four ninety nine or sixty nine ninety nine games in the future, and um, ha- maybe having them as exclusive titles or marquee title or third party titles where they can actually deliver a level of performance and visual fidelity that we've never seen before. Because let's be honest, guys, um, the jump from the PlayStation Two era of consoles with GameCube and Xbox up to the three hundred and sixty and PS three was breathtaking. And every jump before then was breathtaking. I remember the first time I ever saw Super Mario Brothers 3 running, or Super Mario World, or Street Fighter 2 running, just losing my mind. Absolutely losing my mind, and not being able to think about anything else, not being able to sleep, because it was breathtaking to me, you know, um, coming from the, you know, how, how we had it in the 80s, where um, the early 8 bit machines couldn't deliver anything like it. Now, we all want to see that generational lump. Uh, generational jump because we didn't get it this time and people are disappointed to say the least um will they release the machine split i think it's very possible but i don't see it happening i think i think the idea of having all of the develop uh, developers under one roof all developing for one unified architecture um whether that's you know the mobile devices and the mobile apps and games that will connect to the console will, will be the supplemental handheld which will still connect to the console and and whether it will be the actual um, home console games but they will all be able to be played on your telly and certain amounts of them will be able to be played on the go on your mobile device on your on your supplemental screen i really believe that um <laughs> if you look at the size of the 3ds um, library of games and you look at the Wii U library of games and you look at maybe adding a few you know mobile apps in there together you lump that all in together under one roof that's a lot of games even though third parties abandoned Nintendo um, to an extent over the last couple of generations that's a lot of games and that's more exclusive games than Sony and Microsoft together could ever hope for um, and if they got third party but parties back you know the game library on this machine with all of these development houses all working for, you know, a home console that can run everything, is is crazy. It, it's it's completely. Um, I don't think we've ever seen it before. Um, it will be like going back to the days of um, PS1, PS2, and the NES, where where just everyone seems to be developing for one machine. Um, one strategy that I think Nintendo hasn't been looking at that. You know, with this cash surplus that people are saying they're going to burn through the next couple of console generations, trying to give it one last go at dominating this market, what they should be doing, because software is king, is licensing or out buying out other companies. Now, on the top of their agenda should be Sega. Sega are struggling. Um, Sega have Sonic, and Sonic does sell. Um, games still, you know, it doesn't sell shift in the un- kind of numbers of units it used to, but if they want to keep pushing the family friendly thing there are a few better known mascots out there that aren't owned by Disney let's face it guys, Disney owned pretty much everything at the moment, um, than Sonic 
buy Sonic, make them exclusive. You're not going to play a Sonic game unless it's got Nintendo's name on it. That's a win. Um, and Sega are a bit of a dark horse. Sega don't do too badly in the PC market, and that's down to um, a couple of games that they, the series that they run. One is Total War. Now, if you've got a supplemental screen device controlling a game, top-down strategy game, like Total War, that sells millions of units every year, um, would would be a fantastic boon for the console, and it would offer a type of gameplay that console gamers have not, you know, really had since you know Command and Conquer uh, in in its heyday. Um, a, you know, to have the the absolute premier marquee RTS on your console exclusively. And be able to license that out to PC still and make a profit on the side would be would be massive. And then you've got Football Manager. Now, f- for people in the US, they might not know, but obviously a couple of billion people on this planet love the game of soccer, what we call football. And there's one game that, you know, outside of FIFA that just sells millions of copies every year, and that is Football Manager. Um, and it's a management sim, you know, it's not massively exciting. It was on consoles before, like the Xbox. With it being able to connect to this supplemental handheld device or to a mobile phone, as we've been discussing, then all of a sudden you've got a really comfortable way to play these kind of games and it would offer a type of gameplay and a kind of experience that the other manufacturers just aren't offering. And uh, again, it's another exclusive that can sell a million units for Nintendo. Now, you know, these aren't the only companies. If you've got someone like Capcom that at the moment have taken a handout from Sony to publish, help publish and, you know, develop Street Fighter Five, why couldn't Nintendo do something similar with a Resident Evil? Walk out on E at E three saying, Guess what guys? We're gonna have Castlevania, we're gonna have Metal Gear Solid Six, we're gonna have Resident Evil Seven, we're gonna have Football Manager and Total War and all these franchises that no one would expect all going to sell over a million units loads and loads more titles for this Nintendo NX which to be honest I think is going to be one of the best supported consoles Nintendo have ever produced third parties or not they've got a lot of development houses and they've been splitting them and they've been pushing majority of that talent towards the 3DS because it has sold 60 million units and it, you know let's face it the Wii U yeah, it's probably going to sell somewhere between 15 and 16 million lifetime units so it makes sense um, now, Nintendo has captured around 15-20% to 20% of the market share. How's it done this with no decent online, no decent way to connect to your friends, no de- decent social features, no third party support? <laughs> I mean, let's listen a sec here guys, alright? If Microsoft had no decent internet services, no way to talk to your friends, um, you know, easily, no um, decent third party support, no Call of Duties or Maddens or what have you, um, where would the Xbox be right now? Where would the PlayStation be right now? People would hate these consoles, people would, wouldn't touch them with a barge pole. The fact that Nintendo can still shift units and make a profit without these things is mind blowing. Now, with third party support, <laughs> With decent online and decent friends and social uh, connections, like they're they're now touting, is what they're focusing on with the new machine. Um, you've got to believe that they could easily, easily double their market share and um, and make this a free horse race again. Now, what's the launch lineup going to look like? Now, there's been a lot of talk about re-releases of Wii U games, and I think they should do it. People are going to be like, "Why are they doing this?" You know, um, this is just a cheap. You know, move for them to get more um, more software on the shelves. You know, they're not real NX games. But I can tell you now, not a lot of people bought a Wii U. Not a lot of people have played these games. Uh, Sony did the same thing with all the HD re-releases of PS3 games. Now, they're there to sit on the shelf and give people options. I don't expect them to sell them any copies of these games, but they'll sell as many as they manufacture because they're Nintendo. That's how it works. You know, if it's a hundred thousand units a piece, then it's hundred pound units thousand units apiece but it gives their fans options so if we get another Splatoon re-release a re-release of Smash you know kind of game of year editions up versions of these games now running at 1080p 60 or you know let's face it NX could probably push high resolutions 
they might be even better still. Um, and with the backing of Metroid, yes, I believe it's going to be a launch window title. I'm thinking it's going to be within the first 10 months, I reckon, a new Metroid. Um, the Zelda, which on NX will clearly be head and shoulders above the Wii U version, um, hence why they've pushed development back so far. And, you know, with all other Nintendo's franchises, your Mario Kart's, your Smash's, your Donkey Kong's, um, first party support won't be an issue. I I, I do believe we're going to have a Mario title within the first six months, a Zelda title at launch, uh, Metroid within the first year, and third party support similar initially to what the Wii U had, and then I expect it to grow once they realise what a good machine they've got in their hands. I wouldn't be surprised, guys, right, and this is quite a big one, I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo just cheekily left the door open to um, a manufacturer like Oculus and said, here's our dev kits, see if you can make this thing run compatibly, um, if we can get something done, happy days, and I wouldn't be surprised if some kind of VR support does come down the pipeline shortly after um, launch for the Nintendo NX. I don't think a gimmick like VR is going to completely slip Nintendo's mind. They love a good gimmick, they love being on the edge, and I think if their machine was powerful enough to run a consumer um, Oculus unit, I think they would leave that door just open a crack, just in case someone wanted to walk through it. Um, yeah, and you know, let's let's stop a second. And if you're a Nintendo fan out there, just take in the fact that more hardware might be coming soon. Now Nintendo kind of, you know, they bring hardware to the market like no other um, company really. Even if the machine turns out to be a dud, there's just something about a new new Nintendo hardware. And I think that's been reflective in how hyped everyone's been getting over YouTube and the internet in general. Um, and as a, I don't know, if a, a former Nintendo fanboy, it really describes me because I've never really left Nintendo's side. I've bought every machine they've, they've, they've manufactured and I've probably bought 50 games each for each of them. But I have to say, I've not been this excited about a new Nintendo piece of hardware since I was waiting for the N64 to release, which of, in the dizzy days of early 3D was quite the um, quite the release indeed. <laughs> believe, believe you me. And, um, and I, I just want to be the first to just jump on this bandwagon and say... You know, if you're on the fence here and you're wondering whether you should be hyped, whether you should be excited, just just dive in with two feet. I don't see them. I don't see them not delivering a, a you know a fantastic piece of hardware and a very very exciting platform. That doesn't mean it will be a success, but it will be one hell of a roller coaster ride. And I, for one, cannot wait. Well, guys, as always, thanks a lot for uh, staying with me there. It's been it's been a ride as usual, and. Um, if you if you liked the content today, uh, please give it a like or share it with your friends. And uh, I hope that some of you will comment and tell me what you think of um, the Nintendo NX and how excited you are or aren't um, in the comments below. Cheers, guys.